probably wondering how he got in this situation. Well, let's dive in. Hello my fellow sinners, my name is Joel Gaming. Today, I bring you Mortal Sin, a roguelite dungeon crawler where we leave diplomacy at the door and let our fists do the talking. Since evicting the small man who lived in my computer, siphoning a thousand watts away from my motherboard for his TikTok farm, I have been able to play games again where I picked up this gem. We begin by being placed in the overworld area where there are various ethereal portals on the ground that teach us how to play the game and an armor clad man doomed to be our punching bag. Additionally, we meet Helena, our soulbound companion who seems to be doomed to the same fate we are, we can implore for information about the game's universe. Sin seems to underlie the core gameplay loop, which you quickly rack up a lot of as we invade the homes of these silly creatures and start swinging. Prior to committing home invasion in the netherworld, we have our choice of three areas to start in. The dungeon, cave, and eventually once we unlock it, the forest. Each area has its own unique enemies, ranging from Baphomet-style goat people, the pumpkin-headed sorcerers, and whatever this is. As indicated by our progress screen, we can start from any of these areas and go down different routes as we complete levels, where the difficulty scales accordingly. Once dropped in the area we so choose, we have several tools for dealing with the demons before us. Within our arsenal, we can kick or bash to stun and provide us some distance from enemies, as well as light attack, power attack, and hold our power attack for a devastating whirlwind. Of course, we can also figuratively take off our gloves and throw our weapons to the wayside as we start to throw haymakers. Regardless of our choice of delivery for inflicting pain, each class is bestowed with unique abilities that empower our combat prowess. Ranging from invincibility to stopping time to becoming invisible, each ability provides us with a unique approach to combat that is super refreshing between classes and is seamlessly integrated into combat. Once in combat, limbs begin flying as we target enemies' arms, legs, and the occasional head as we chop our way through hordes of enemies. Seriously, this game is so cool. I felt like the Doomslayer as I made short sure work of hordes of demons and other spawnlings that were unfortunate to be on the other side of my 100 man slayer. I love the combat in this game. Speaking of combat, our damage potential is supplemented by not only combos that we can string together, but weapons and armor that are randomly generated and can be found in chests and the remains of less fortunate slayers. In addition, we can also collect buffs that provide us percent-based stat increases to vary our build even further, along with alters that provide us both positive and negative effects where we have to appraise if the gamble is worth it. Good thing the house never loses. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Pounding back our red and blue chug jugs that restore health and gear durability respectively, we make our way through each level using the wide array of weapons available in the game. We got swords, we got maces, we got guandals, we got hundred man slayers, we got funny flying skulls, we got it all. This game has so many weapons that it takes a seemingly simple game mechanic, chopping up enemies, and diversifies it in such an entertaining way. Upon reaching the end of each area, we are met with a giant wave of enemies, along with an area boss that is typically a giant, otherworldly creature that looks like they should be playing for the Lakers instead of guarding a dungeon. Shortly after dispatching the point guard, we are provided with ample loot and our health and durability are fully restored before progressing to the next area. Once the three areas are completed, we get the opportunity to challenge the Embodiment of Sin in the Maw of Sin. Despite clearing the several waves of difficult enemies to reach him, the deity football tackled me into oblivion, effectively ending my run. Fortunately, the end of the run is not the end of the world. Literally, because we are stuck in a time loop in the game. Instead, we are allowed to pick from one of many classes in the game that we unlock by leveling up, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, cleverly adding a layer of strategy into planning subsequent runs. From the vast selection of classes, we can play as the monk, the reaper, the Hoarder, I start eating garbage. the Berserker, <laughs> and the Enigma, among many others. I appreciate this aspect of the game, as even when we have a good run that ends prematurely, or alternatively make our way out of the map and fall to our demise, the idea of starting over does not feel like a chore, and instead allows us to quickly reobtain our progress with a new, fun build. This replayability allowed the once stagnant neuroplasticity in my brain to redevelop, allowing new neural pathways to be formed that, just barely, allowed me to edge out the final boss. 
After separating the boss's head from his shoulders, we are given a sin token that will prevent our next death, and are met with the first ending of the game, where we learn that we are Twin M with the icon of sin, and hereby absolved of all sin. To unlock the secret ending, we are required to beat the three trials of resolve that appear at the end of each area, arenas jam-packed with enemies that do not hesitate to siphon our soul. I heard these are challenge areas. How hard can they be? Eventually, I am able to triumph over the hordes of demons, and upon beating the embodiment of sin, we are presented with the secret ending. And with that, we conclude Mortal Sin. Kinda. <laughs> Even after beating the game, there is still much content to unlock, and game features tied in the progression that provide a natural sense of longevity to the game. Included in this content are the remaining classes, in dungeon quests from Helena that allow us to access more of the game's mysterious lore, and color palettes that transform the look of the game. Let me take a minute to voice just how much I love the visuals in this game. Aside from the color palettes, the dark medieval aesthetic to the game can be enhanced by trying different presets that can be customized to your preference. Personally, I love the retro look that provides just the right amount of grain to the already gritty gameplay. All that's left is to commend this game for not only its excellent game design, but its immersive music that makes you feel like you're fighting for your life in every intense encounter and its story, where we continue to learn more about how the quote, greed and hubris of mankind have led to the uprising of soulless husks that pine for our life force and continue to haunt us as the omnipotent Helena transforms the more she recalls her memories. Overall, I found this game to be fantastic, and it has my seal of approval as someone who loves roguelike games. I definitely recommend checking out the game on Steam and supporting the solo developer who created such a polished title. They are also continuing to update the game, with a large update having been released recently, so I'm sure there's more cool content soon to come. In the same way, if you found this video to be some cool content, please like and subscribe. Also, if you had a favorite part of the video, let us know down below. I appreciate everyone's support, and I wanted to thank you for spending some time on my page to watch my video. It means a lot. Now, I am off to continue to rack up hours in this addicting game and seek retribution amongst the swarm of blue ghouls and their flying body parts. This is Droll Gaming, signing off.